Now at 6, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Hartford police are looking for three men after two convenience store workers were shot during a rush hour robbery. Thanks for joining us. I'm Sarah Sanchez. And I'm Brent Harden. Police say the men ran away before they arrived, but two employees were rushed to the hospital where they remain this evening. Fox 61's Samaya Hernandez live at police headquarters now with what we're learning tonight. Samaya. Brent and Sarah, it was a terrifying scene and it all unfolded at a key intersection at a time when there were many people out and about. Police say two workers were hurt in the process. One of them was critically wounded when first responders arrived. Somebody got shot, somebody got shot. I'm like, wow. Monday morning was not business as usual at this popular corner store. I was working and everything and that was just all of a sudden somebody got shot. Minutes after 8 o'clock, at the same time area children walked into neighborhood schools. Police say three masked men wearing black clothing unleashed violence inside a bodega in the heart of the North End. I seen today three guys and a guy went in there first and then he started shooting and then they just ran down that way. Witnesses processing what they saw unfold along a major thoroughfare in the middle of rush hour. I saw one person went in the went store first and then the other three people went inside after him. Hartford police were dispatched to Albany Avenue across from Vine Street for a report of a person shot but soon discovered another victim. Officers arrived uh, very quickly, located two victims. Both were suffering from gunshot wounds, uh, both were transported to St. Francis Hospital for treatment. Detectives are scanning camera footage Monday afternoon in hopes of identifying three suspects who got away before officers arrived. They left on foot. Uh, we believe that that was there. It looks like this was a robbery. Uh, three males entered the store. Um, one of them opened fire at two of the employees, so we believe the victims are both employers in the store. The victims, a man in his 40s, another in his 50s. Too much violence. Too much violence in the world. And the latest update tonight, we were told both employees are expected to survive and the man who was critically wounded when authorities first arrived, his condition has been upgraded to stable. We're live in Hartford. I'm Samaya Hernandez, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Samaya, thank you. Well, tonight, candidates for Hartford mayor will gather for a debate just about two weeks from Election Day. But not all hopefuls are participating. Fox 61 political reporter Emma Wolforst is live in Hartford. She joins us to explain. So, Emma, who's missing tonight? <laughs> Well, Sarah, Brent, a pretty important candidate will not be up at those tables behind me in just about half an hour. Democratic nominee Arun and Arulampalam. The hopefuls who will be participating in tonight's debate, the Republican nominee Michael McGarry, as well as for petitioning candidates, Councilman Nick LeBron, Jay Stan McCauley, Giselle Jacobs, and Mark Stewart Greenstein. Now, with Arulampalam absent, this debate really an opportunity opportunity for Republican McGarry and these petitioning candidates to take a chance in the spotlight. They're hoping to get their message out to those potentially still undecided voters at this debate tonight. This event will kick off in just about half an hour at 630. I'm told topics will include economic development, health care and crime. We'll be here watching this debate and we will bring you recap tonight on the news at 10 and 11 for now live in Hartford Emma Wolforst Fox 61 Connecticut's news station all right thank you Emma well the rain is gone after was Saturday right it was another pretty soggy yeah, Saturday it was, it sure was. the chill is in the air at least for now yeah, that may not last long. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, meteorologist Ryan Breton joining us now. Ryan, we got some warm days ahead this week. We sure do, guys. Tonight will be the coldest night of the week, and it's already feeling a little crisp out there now. But we have some late summer warmth coming for Thursday, Friday, and into the start of next weekend. It's 57 in Hartford, 60 in New Haven. We have a nice clear sky overhead. And back to the west, there is some cloud cover, and a bit of this will come in tomorrow, but uh, not too much. Overall, tomorrow is still a pretty good day, too. So this evening, temperatures will be dropping into the 40s and then by tomorrow morning 
some of us ending up in the 30s. A frost advisory has been issued away from the shoreline because we do think areas of frost will form inland the first thing tomorrow morning. That could happen at 36 or even 37 degrees. Along the shoreline, we should stay in the 40s. So not much of a concern there tomorrow. After a frosty start, a mild afternoon with sunshine, temperatures getting back into the low 60s. We'll have a high tomorrow of 64 in New Haven, 63 in Brantford, 62 in Naugatuck, eastern Connecticut, lower to mid 60s, and the high temperature tomorrow in Hartford will be around 64. We may add 10 or even more degrees to these numbers later in the week. We'll talk about how warm it gets, how long it lasts, and when some rain may return too. coming up. Great. Thank you, Ryan. Connecticut's news station has new developments in the lawsuit against Stone Academy. Connecticut's attorney general is hitting leaders of the now defunct Academy hard in a newly amended lawsuit. Yeah, the state's top attorney is accusing the for-profit nursing school of earning record profits while defrauding its students. Fox 61's Matt Karen breaks down the details in the studio here with us tonight. Matt. Well, it's a 22-page amended lawsuit, and it accuses Stone Academy leaders of getting rich on the backs of their students. You have some questions about the closing of Stone Academy? You saw it first on Fox 61. Stone Academy CEO Joe Bierbaum's $1.5 million estate in Rocky Hill. Now you can read about it in the Attorney General's lawsuit. You know, feels like and looks like a huge Ponzi scheme to line their pockets. It's been eight months since Stone Academy abruptly closed. For-profit nursing college with three Connecticut campuses and 900 students left their educational futures in limbo. I haven't heard anything about my cash refund that I'm supposed to get for the tuition that I paid out of pocket. Now, new details about what allegedly happened behind closed doors. The amount of revenue and cash that's coming into Stone skyrocket. The lawsuit alleges Stone reaped record profits during the pandemic, but failed to provide the education and training it promised, siphoning money out of Stone and putting it into Beer Bomb's other for-profit school, Payer College of Art, as well as his home improvement company. As that money went into Joe Beer Bomb's $1.4 million house in Rocky Hill, uh, with a swimming pool and a tennis court. Beerbaum claimed on social media his goal is to have a positive societal impact on low-income communities. But the lawsuit alleges that while he and his top associates were living a life of luxury, his campuses were falling into disrepair. Giving almost none of it back to students in, in the form of services, textbooks, um, they can't even get heated classrooms and definitely not qualified instructors. Former nursing students tell Fox 61 they were funding his empty promises out of their own pockets. I'm actually considering putting nursing on the back burner and um, furthering my education as a vet tech um, because nursing has failed me. It, it, Stone Academy took that from me. We heard from Joe Bierbaum for the first time last week when he provided testimony in a separate lawsuit, claiming it was the state who put students in a bad position by forcing them to close. We did not make a decision to close. Well, you closed, yes? That's true. We did not make that decision. Stone Academy's accounts and assets for what they hope will be an eventual payout to students who were allegedly defrauded. In the studio, Matt Karen, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Matt, thank you. Now to a Fox 61 update. A teenager who was stabbed in Manchester is under arrest tonight for the fight that resulted in his stabbing. Police say 19-year-old Elijah Madeira got into an argument with a 52-year-old man at the Dunkin' Donuts on Middle Turnpike West last week. Madeira punched the man, they say, and the man couldn't get away, so he stabbed Madeira in self-defense. Madeira was stabbed in the head, neck, and back and was sent to the hospital for treatment. He now faces assault and criminal mischief charges. Naugatuck police arrest a woman accused of killing a motorcyclist in a crash. Police say 76-year-old Cara DeBernardi uh, De crossed the center line and hit three motorcycles on New Haven Road back in June. Travis LaRoe died at the scene. A second motorcyclist was severely injured, and the third had minor injuries. And happening right now in Westport, the search continues for survivors of a sunken boat just off the Connecticut shoreline. Police in Westport say just before, uh, just after, I should say, 4 p.m. Sunday, a boater spotted a man standing on a navigation buoy off Cocono Island. Another man and a woman were also rescued from the water. A translator helped police determine those three boaters were originally part of a party of five, and police say their boat sank and two more passengers remain unaccounted for. 
New here at 6, Waterford police need your help finding two thieves. Police say these two people stole nearly $400 worth of merchandise from Walmart Saturday. An employee at the front entrance asked for a receipt, but the suspects just walked out and got into a dark colored older model Jeep Grand Cherokee. Call police if you recognize these two suspects. The Bank of America is closing three branch offices in Connecticut. The branches are in Hartford, Greenwich, and Norwalk. Bank of America operates 90 branch locations in Connecticut and is the state's largest bank. Still to come here on the